In this video, we see how to find inverses of matrices that are 3 by 3 or bigger. So inverses of matrices which are 2 by 2, we can find by the rule, and there is another video you can watch on that if you haven't watched it already. But for those larger than 2 by 2, 3 by 3s, 4 by 4s, and so on, we can find the inverse matrix using essentially elementary row operations, the same ones that were used in Gaussian elimination. And the method is actually even very similar to Gaussian elimination. It's just a little bit more work. So basically, the way it works is instead of just trying to get non-zeros on the diagonals, we need to get ones on the diagonals. And instead of getting zeros below the diagonal, we need them above the diagonal as well. So when we're computing inverses using row operations, we can follow this four-step plan here. First thing is we augment the matrix we're trying to find the inverse of, let's call it A, and the appropriate or same-sized identity matrix. Then we use elementary row operations, the same ones as from Gaussian elimination, swap rows, multiply rows by constants, and adding multiples of rows to reduce the A part of the augmented matrix into the identity matrix. So basically, one column at a time, we're going to try to get ones in the diagonals and everything else in that same column equal to zero using elementary row operations. Once we've done that to all of the columns of A and it's been transformed into the identity matrix, the original identity on the right will have been transformed itself into the inverse. Now one thing to note is if you end up with a row of zeros at any point in time, you can actually confidently say, provided you've not made any mistakes, there is no inverse of the matrix. So that's just one thing to keep in mind there. So let's see it by example. We're going to try to find the inverse of this matrix here. It's a 4x4 four four matrix, it's square, so that means it can have an inverse. It doesn't necessarily have one. But following what we've just seen, we're going to start by augmenting that with the same sized identity matrix. So 1, 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, 2. Then we want to augment it with a 4x4 four four identity matrix. Remember that's a matrix of zeros except for ones on the diagonal. So there we have it. And I'm going to write that as A augmented with the identity matrix. And that's equal to that. So now we're going to try to uh, use elementary row operations to get a 1 here, it's already there, zeros beneath that, then a 1 here, zeros above and below, a 1 here, zeros above and below, and finally a 1 here and zeros above. Alright, so I've copied that down onto the next page, A augmented with the identity. The first step was to get a 1 in the diagonal, already there, so we can move to the next step, which is to get zeros beneath it. Now you can see there's already some zeros in the second row and the third row, so we don't have to worry about those. We just need to, sorry, in the third and the fourth row, we need to get a zero here using a multiple of this row. Well, that's simply just row two becomes the old row two, take away row one. We're just going to subtract the top row from the second row. Now what I'm going to do is just copy that all down here, and what I'm thing going to do is just replace all these elements. I'm going to draw them in red so that you can see exactly what I've done. Row 2 minus row 1 is going to leave us with a 0 there. 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. 1 minus 0. And then zeros all the way along. So that's what's given us that result just there. And next step is to move along and get a 1 in this diagonal. Well, again, it's already done, so we don't need to worry about that. We do, however, need to get zeros above and below it. So we've got a zero up the top, so we'll leave that one alone. We need to turn this element into a zero, and that one's already done as well. So we only need to work on row three. And what we're going to do with it is use a multiple of row two to get a zero down here. Oh, it's simply just going to subtract it. So row three minus row two. Now again, all of the other rows will stay exactly the same as they are here on the second row of working. Uh, but the third row is going to subtract the second row. So we're going to have a 0, 1 minus 1 becomes 0 like we wanted, 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 0 is 3, and so on. So we have 1, minus 1, 1, and 0. So that instruction up there has given us that result. The next step is to get a 1 in the third diagonal. It's already there. If it wasn't, we'd just need to divide that third, third row by whatever that number was. Divide it by, or sorry, multiply it by one over that constant. 
the same thing really, and we'd get a 1 there. Now we need to get zeros above and below that diagonal, so a 0 already there in the top, that's fine. We need to use a multiple of row 3 to get a 0 there, and there as well. Now these are just going to be subtractions, so I'm going to say row 2 is going to become row 2 minus row 3, and row 4, similarly, will be row 4 minus row 3. Okay, so row 2 minus row 3 is going to be 0, 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 minus 3 is minus 3. Uh, subtracting, we're going to get minus 2, 0, minus 1, and 0. And then down to the fourth row, subtracting row 3 also, we have 0, 0, 0, minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, and 1. Now I'm just having a look, I have made a little error there, that shouldn't be 0, because 1 minus minus 1 is actually 2, so I'll just fix that one up. Now you can see on the left we're starting to see this matrix turn into the identity matrix. We still need to fix this one up. And the original identity matrix is nothing like the identity, it's going to turn into the inverse matrix. Now I've just copied that down to the next page so we've got some room. The last couple of steps we need to turn this minus 1 into a 1. So I'm going to say row 4 becomes row 4 times minus 1. So we'll have down the bottom there a 0, a 0, a 0, a 1, a 1, a minus 1, a 1, a minus 1. And the rest of the matrix just stays the same. So we can fill those in. And now the final thing we need to do to transform our left matrix into the identity is to turn these elements into zeros using a multiple of that fourth row. So that's the last thing we need to do. I'm going to say row 1 will become row 1 minus 2 row 4s. Row 2 will become row 2 plus 3 row 4s. And row 3 will become row 3 minus 3 row 4s. That's basically what we need to do to finish this one off. So I'm going to leave that bottom row alone, and then row 1 minus 2 row 4. So I'm going to have 1, these shouldn't change these first few, 2 minus 1 should be 0. So we should end up with the identity matrix here. 1 minus 2 of these is minus 1. 0 plus 2 is going to be 2. 0 minus 2, and 0 plus 2 finally. Filling in the rest of those, And we have our final result. So you can see on the left here we have the identity matrix, and on the right the inverse matrix of A. So just to finish things off, we can just write it out that the A inverse matrix is equal to this part on the right hand side. So it's minus 1, 2, minus 2, 2, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 3, minus 2, 2, minus 2, 3 and 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. So that's our inverse matrix. Now remember, we can use inverse matrices to solve linear systems of equations. If we started with a linear system of equations which had this coefficient matrix, we could multiply the right-hand side vector by this inverse matrix and get our solution. Anyway, that's it for finding inverses of larger matrices. If you're looking for this in other texts, just look up the section on inverse matrices and see how they explain it and see if it's any different and if that helps you with understanding. Uh, make sure you're attempting the exercises from the worksheets and that you're able to calculate these inverse matrices.